So I need to clear one thing up. Uh, I don't have five degrees. I'm not nearly that smart. What I will say is I changed my, my major five times, <laughs> and sometimes because I ended up getting a C minus in a class and then being a doctor was no longer an option for me. So uh, I wanted to share with you, I also wanted to, I found it funny that, were you surprised that the men all thought that they were good personal communicators? <laughs> yeah. No. I've, I've been disabused of that uh, fallacy in my own life uh, many times. Uh, I want to share with you a few, um, uh, th really three uh, principles that I learned when I was a young, impressionable, uh, curious 20-year-old living on a kibbutz in Israel. Uh, and these three principles have formed for me, well, let's try this again. These three principles um, really have become characteristics not only of, of leadership and the way I lead, uh, but also of who I am and, and, and have become part of my, uh, my own personal life. And the first of these is around being positive. If you can be positive, there will be a lot of great things that come into your life, is my experience. And, and the first place that I learned this was living on a kibbutz. So does anybody know what a kibbutz is? Okay, so there are a few people that know what a kibbutz is. So a kibbutz is, it's in Israel. It's, it's basically a collective of about five to 600 people uh, that have come together. They live uh, and do everything together for the kibbutz. Nobody has a salary. They all do their own work on the kibbutz. Uh, and they all have very similar houses. Uh, and then there's usually a dining hall in the middle of the kibbutz that everybody goes to have meals together. And so it really is kind of almost like a, a commune. But they bring people from the outside to help do some of the work on the, on the kibbutz. And that's what I did. I took some time off for school after getting one of those C minuses. I thought, I'll go, I'll go on to the kibbutz and I'll, I'll work uh, for six months. And, and what I found really quickly is that they don't always give the best jobs to the volunteers that come from the outside. <laughs> right? And I figured I got the very worst job on the kibbutz on my first job, and that was to be the dishwasher for those five to 600 people that came to the dining hall three times a day. And I hated it. It was miserable. I could, the, the time, it went so slow. I thought, how am I ever going to make it through the day washing dishes all day long? And then I made a choice. I decided what I was going to do was whistle. While I, was wa while I was washing the dishes. And I found that there was a change in me. As I started to whistle, the time went by a lot faster. I still hated doing dishes, but the process was less painful for me. And then the most important thing that I found was that other people started noticing that change in my attitude. And I, it was soon I was being asked to do other jobs outside of the, the, the dining hall within the kibbutz, and it opened up a lot of opportunities for me. I absolutely believe this uh, Hindi quote, um, that if we live a life that is positive, we will attract positivity. And likewise, if we leave, live a life that's negative, we're going to attract negativity. Just think about those Eeyores in your life, right? It'll never work. That suck the life out of you and everybody around you. And then contrast that to the people that you know that are positive, that are optimistic, <laughs> that make you feel like anything is possible. That's the kind of leader that inspires people to excellence. And that's the kind of leader that I have found um, is the most effective in, in being successful. Now, marry that positivity with confidence. And when I talk about confidence, confidence is the thing that allows you to kind of go through the challenges and the, and the, and the, and the, and the hard times that you go through. Um, we're not, you know, sometimes we confuse confidence with arrogance. And that's not what I'm talking about. I, I was a, a CEO of a very small company. We had about 12 employees, very little funding. And there were times when I felt like we were going to rule the world. This tiny little startup in Draper, Utah, we could not lose. And then there were times when I looked at it and thought, I don't have any idea how we're ever going to be successful. And arrogance is ignoring that and just blustering your way, being boastful through this and pounding your chest to get through it. Confidence is acknowledging that those feelings are very real. 
In fact, that may be your reality. There may not be a way through if you keep going the way you're going. But it's the knowledge that you and the team that you're with are going to figure it out. And, they're go and you're going to be successful in the end. It may not be what you think you're doing today, but you will be successful in the end. That's what I'm talking about with confidence. And that is contagious. And that's what your role as a leader is. Whatever, whatever size team you have is to, to cultivate that confidence throughout the organization. A great example of this is the story of Zappos. So Tony Shea, who started the company, right, his, his goal was not to be, you know, to sell the, the most shoes. What he wanted to do was deliver happiness. And he had the confidence to believe, even though you'd look at that and you say, really? It's your business strategy? You're a shoe company. Your shoe, your shoe sell company. He, but that was his, the confidence that he had. And he, he cultivated that throughout the culture of the company to the point where there was one uh, first-line support person who received a call for a return on some boots. The, they found out that the reason the lady was returning the boots is because her husband had just been killed in a car accident. And those boots had been for him. That person had the confidence to go take the return and then order flowers from the company without even checking with their supervisor. That's the power that you can infuse in the culture of a company if you start with that, co that confidence yourself. But it has to start with you. I learned this, um, and I believe this quote this is a Teddy Roosevelt quote. Uh, I learned this on the kibbutz. So I had gotten out of the dishwasher job, right, through this positivity. I was working outside with, with a bunch of other the volunteers. The job that everybody wanted on the kibbutz was to be the handyman. Because then you got to drive around in this tractor with this trailer, and you got to go help people, and you got to pick stuff up, you take it out to the dump. It was the job that everybody wanted on the kibbutz, including me. That's the one job I really, really wanted. And we were out working, and the head handyman was having a problem, and he asked one of the volunteers that I was working with, hey, will you back up my trailer in, in, um, over here? That person got on and tried to do it and failed. They, could, they didn't know how to back up a trailer which isn't an easy thing to do. And, he, and so he asked, is there anything that, um, is there anybody that knows how to do this? Well, I'd backed up a trailer a few times, but I was in no way competent at doing it. But I raised my hand and said, I'll do it. And I jumped on the tractor, right? And I didn't get it right at the first time. It took me, I was backing up, and you, it's weird and goes the wrong way when you're trying to back up. Um, and eventually, but eventually, a couple tries, I backed it up. Eventually, that person requested me to be a handyman with, with him. And I got that job. When you marry, the positivity got me in a place where that opportunity presented itself. But it was the confidence to act that allowed me to actually get that job, that dream job that I had. Now, if you can keep those two in mind and then marry that with a sense of humility. Uh, I learned this the hard way. I was having a great career. I was at a Fortune 500 company. I was moving up the ladder really quickly. I was pretty high in the organization. And then I got fired. And then I got depressed. And what I recognized was that I had tied up too much of my own personal self-worth in what I did and the accomplishments that, that, I, that had come my way as part of my job. And so when that was taken away from me, then I, lo I felt like less of a person. It's humility. I was forced into this humility to recognize that these things that happened, they're, they're opportunities for us. This became probably the best thing that ever happened to me in my career. But I couldn't see it because I was so focused uh, on the pride and the arrogance that I had in this, in this, in this role. There's a great parallel to this in nature. Uh, and in fact, I used to think that a butterfly was a caterpillar with wings. That's not how it happens. I've learned that when a caterpillar goes into the chrysalis, it actually disintegrates. And it becomes this primordial soup. And then there's these tiny little disks in there that then transform it into this beautiful butterfly. 
And that's the opportunity that we have when we approach these challenges in our lives and these changes that happen in our lives with humility is we recognize that this is an opportunity for us to change, to become that beautiful butterfly. I made the mistake of thinking less about myself because I had tied so much of myself up in the pride of what I did and what I accomplished. The opportunity and what I've realized since then what I realized actually on the kibbutz was that everybody had a role to play. Everybody, regardless of what you were doing, had a role to play in success. And if you will listen to your employees, if you listen to other leaders, if you listen to your family, you'll begin to recognize that maybe I don't have all the answers. Maybe I'm not the smartest person in the room. And when you realize that, that's when you unlock the potential in yourself and within those that you're leading. These, I was lucky to learn these three things when I was 20 years old, but it's taken me a lifetime to really understand that there is power in being positive, in having confidence, and really accepting and living a life of humility. And I promise you, if you will do that, I've found in my life that as I have done that, not only have I become <laughs> a better leader, but I've also become a better person. Thank you very much. Thank you.